Finding data is one of the most important parts of a scientist's job. Without data, it's almost impossible to prove your hypothesis. And my hypothesis? That with my help and your hard work, you're going to get a great score on the science portion of the ACT. OK, let's discuss the data representation passages of the ACT science section. There are typically three of these passages with five questions each. These passages are generally the most straightforward of the science passages. You will find mostly charts, graphs, and pictures, and less reading. The best strategy is to skim the introduction and head right to the questions. If you're not sure where to find an answer, first look at the answer choices. The question may lead you directly to one of the charts or tables. Then reference that chart or table to find the specific data. You may even be asked to draw inferences from information from more than one chart. Pay close attention to which figure, chart, or table each question is referencing. For example, when the question directs you to figure one, don't go to figure two or table one. Here's a pro tip for you. When you read that the question says figure one, immediately place your pencil on that header so you know exactly where to look. You should also pay attention to the legend and headings, as well as the axes of graphs, which may not always be what you expect, and units of measure, which are often presented in the questions. In most cases, you'll have to dig a little deeper into the chart or table to get your answer. Here's an example. A study was conducted on the effects of pesticide exposure on domestic chicken breeds. Some zoologists believe that exposure to pesticides can lead to lower birth rates and increased susceptibility to illness. Table 1 shows the average number of eggs laid, average number of eggs hatched, and resistance to illness before being exposed to a pesticide for several different domestic chicken breeds. Here's our Table 1 question. According to Table 1, what is the relationship between resistance to illness and average number of eggs laid? Our answer choices are F, the average number of eggs laid remains constant. G, there is no direct relationship. H, as resistance increases, the average number of eggs laid increases. Or J, as resistance increases, the average number of eggs laid decreases. There are actually two more charts with this passage, but this question only asks you to refer to Table 1. First look at the column for resistance to illness. Notice the chicken breeds are listed in order of highest to lowest resistance. Next, you would compare the resistance to illness column to the column showing the average number of eggs laid. You can see that there is no smooth transition from lowest to highest or highest to lowest in the average number of eggs laid column. In fact, the numbers appear to be all over the place. Because we know that the average number of eggs laid does not remain constant, answer F is not correct. Also, eggs laid neither increases nor decreases relative to resistance, so H and J are also not correct. Therefore, the only answer that makes sense is G. There is no direct relationship. Let's try another question using a graph. In this example, it might seem like we're jumping around a lot, but you'll see the advantage of skimming, going to the question, and then referring back to the passage when you need more information. After you skim the passage, go straight to the questions. Our first question will ask for figure 4.3, which we show here, so we'll focus on that in the passage. Figure 4.3 illustrates the relationship between vapor pressure and temperature for four organic compounds belonging to the alkane group. The normal boiling point is indicated by a horizontal dashed line. Okay, let's look at the question. According to figure 4.3, an organic compound will boil at a lower temperature if A, vapor pressure increases, B, atmospheric pressure decreases, C, atmospheric and vapor pressures become unequal, or D, vapor pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure. 
we can see that all four compounds have graphs that slope upward, showing a relationship where pressure increases as temperature increases. Thus, pressure decreases as temperature decreases. The question asks when the compound will boil at a lower temperature than those indicated by the dashed line. Answer A can't be right because vapor pressure increases when temperature increases, not decreases. Cross out A. However, the remaining questions refer to atmospheric pressure, which isn't shown in this graph. We need to go back to the passage to help us find the answer. Here's a sentence that might help. When vapor pressure equals the surrounding atmospheric pressure, boiling occurs. Boiling point is our dashed line so the boiling point must be the same as the atmospheric pressure. Well, we determined that if the pressure decreases, the boiling point decreases, so atmospheric pressure must also decrease. The answer is clearly B. Circle it, and let me reward you with a little victory clap for that. Let's take a look at one more data representation problem. However, I'm going to make this a pause and solve, so you can work it out on your own before we go through it together. When I say pause, you'll pause the video and solve the problem. Come back when you're done. Here's the question. Current research indicates that oceans absorb atmospheric carbon dioxide, CO2, and that as atmospheric carbon dioxide increases, so does the amount that oceans absorb. Table 2 depicts changes to ocean chemistry and pH estimated using scientific models calculated from surface ocean measurement data. The statement begins, The data in Table 2 indicates that as the concentration of carbon dioxide in the water rises, and the answer choices complete the sentence. Okay, ready, set, pause. All right, how'd it go? Let's take a closer look and make sure you're doing everything correctly. First, we'll take a look at the question. We'll need information from Table 2 to answer the question. We're looking for something related to as the concentration of carbon dioxide in the water rises. The table doesn't list the words carbon dioxide, but it does list CO2, which all you chemistry students know means carbon dioxide. Moving on, we hit the next small snag. We're looking for the concentration of CO2 in the water, but the table only lists the atmospheric concentration of CO2. Not the same thing. But the passage can help us here, too. It says, as atmospheric carbon dioxide increases, so does the amount that oceans absorb. That means as the atmospheric concentration increases, so does the concentration in the water. We're in business. All of the answer choices mention something about pH either increasing or decreasing, so let's see if we can work with that. If we go back to the table, we see that as the atmospheric concentration increases from 280 to 380 to 560, the average pH of surface oceans decreases from 8.18 to 8.07 to 7.92. So we can cross off answer choices B and D, which both say the pH increases. We're left with answer choices A and C, and they both mention something about bicarbonate. If we look at the table, we see that as carbon dioxide concentration increases, the level of bicarbonate increases from 1,768 to 1,867 to 1,976. Answer choice C says bicarbonate concentration decreases. That's wrong, so let's cross it out. That leaves us with answer choice A. Answer choice A says the pH decreases, and we've already proven that part correct. And it says the balance shifts towards bicarbonate instead of carbonate. We've already seen that bicarbonate increases, so let's check the table and see what happens to carbonate. Sure enough, as CO2 increases, carbonate decreases from 225 to 185 to 141. So as bicarbonate increases, carbonate decreases, which means the balance shifts towards bicarbonate instead of carbonate. Answer choice A is correct. If you remember to skim the passage, 
pay close attention to the graph headings, units of measure, and axes labels, you should be able to answer the data representation questions quite easily. And maybe you'll pick up some scientific knowledge along the way. For instance, I just learned that the boiling point of pentane was 36.1 degrees Celsius. Who knows when that little tidbit will come in handy?